Another aspect of the lathe that has generated quite a bit of interest is the tool rest. As you can see, it is an articulated arm to which that the tool rest is attached. This is a bit of a hybrid between several of the different tool rests I found during my during the research phase. The Malthrop lathe, uh, home homemade lathe tool rest, which was a big uh, beam. The Vicmark aftermarket outboard tool rest that you can purchase from uh, Vicmark directly. Uh, very similar, although not nearly as robust. And the stock tool rest that comes with the VB36. Uh, I did like the VB36 rest uh, a lot. I did not like how it was mounted directly beneath the headstock, so it would require a reduction in the capacity of the lathe. So this is a bit of a hybrid between those three different designs. If we take a closer look, you will find that the rails that are bolted to the frames are three quarters of an inch thick steel by four inches wide. These top and bottom plates, the first link arm of the, of the tool rest, is also three quarters by four inch steel. What you don't see is on the bottom, let's see if we can see it, those are carriage bolts that go all the way up. There is a square notch that matches the carriage bolts so that you don't have to worry about spinning the bolts when you turn the handles. The square hole holds them right in place. The second arm, the second link arm, as we can see here, uh, you can see that it has been modified from the original. And you can see that it has been cut uh, there's a weld there that actually bridges both halves together. And these are stiffener bars, top and bottom on both sides. Uh, together, this is about two inches thick of steel. The original second link arm was quite a bit longer, and it turned out that it was too long. It flexed uh, under load. It flexed way too much under load. About an inch or so, which was quite dangerous. Uh, I, I limped through one project the cherry bowl, uh, the 18 inch cherry bowl, you can see a video of that if you're interested in my channel. Um, I limped through that project and immediately after it was done I had to redesign this. So I shortened it by about two thirds. It, it is quite a bit shorter but I have not lost any capacity as a result. The foot as you can see here is a single uh, solid rod about one inch thick that has a hollow tube in which it goes in, in, into and the adjustable locking collars welded to it. It turns out that it does not need to be adjustable. Once I've set it in place, I've never had to mess with it. It is not a bad feature to have, but it is completely unnecessary. Uh, have In the year or so that I've been using the lathe, I have yet to adjust that. The uh, previous, I had two previous foot designs that I will put pictures of so you can see what they were. One was a locking foot, and the other one was a uh, a welded steel three uh, three pad uh, leg and that was a disaster that uh, was actually worse than the amount of flex that I had in the arm originally if we move up you will find that this is welded together two pieces of tubing that is out of necessity the tubing that I had were two different pieces I did not have one that was long enough to to use so I simply put a pin there is a pin inside there on both sides that actually connect the two and maintain a strong straight joint. Again, I had it lying around so I used it, but a single tube would have been fine. I uh, didn't need to spend the money in buying a single tube when I already had these two. The tool rest, it is a one-way tool rest. It is the biggest tool rest that I could find available commercially. Um, like I said, one way out of Canada, it's 18 inches long. The, the shaft on it, it, the post is an inch and a half in diameter. This is a shaft locking collar. It's actually only welded on one side, the opposite side. And uh, this handle, as you can see here, turning it will loosen it and let you adjust this up and down. Very, very nice. I love this design. Works incredibly well.